In the early 2000s, the United States government decided its current fleet of aircraft carriers were not going to be up to the task of defending American interests overseas in the decades to come. They wanted a carrier fleet that would be faster, bigger, that would be capable of launching and receiving hundreds and ultimately thousands of aircraft every single day, no matter which direction the wind was blowing once all the new ships had been deployed. They wanted more advanced systems to detect and destroy the enemy faster. The new design would use less crewmen and incorporate significantly better survivability systems with less maintenance and ultimately a much more reduced lifespan cost than the Nimitz class it would be replacing. Sixteen years after cutting the first steel plate for the new vessel, the U.S. Navy now has at its command the most powerful, most deadly, and most expensive aircraft carrier ever to set sail, the USS Gerald R. Ford. But with cost and time overruns galore, meaning the Ford still has not yet been officially deployed, could this new ship have a similar impact and legacy on the Navy as its namesake had on the country as a whole? When Gerald Rudolph Ford took over the presidency of the United States from the disgraced Richard Nixon, he did so in the middle of the most troubling times for the country since the end of the Second World War. Then as now, tensions with Russia were strained to say the least, and the new incumbent of the Oval Office was tasked with finding a way to cool the tensions with Moscow, as well as healing America from yet another war that had taken place a long way from home and cost far too many American servicemen and women's lives. The latest U.S. administration will be hoping things are different this time around. So far, it's not looking so good. Since the USS Gerald R. Ford joined the Navy's fleet in 2017, it still has not been deployed four years later. Just like the president it's named after, the United States Navy's premier naval vessel offers much. But just as President Ford suffered setback after setback, could this $13 billion floating weapon of mass destruction be dogged with similar problems? In this new video, we'll take a look at the most efficient and technologically advanced aircraft carrier ever built. We'll go through the new weapon systems, radar setups, aircraft capabilities, and crew demands to give you the inside view on the Navy's biggest new toy. It's nearly 20 years since the U.S. Department of Defense awarded the first contract for the USS Gerald Ford to Northrop Grumman Newport News. This ship was going to have to sail the seas for up to half a century, potentially through to 2060 and beyond. Understanding what technologies would be required then and having the foresight to design for that in 2003 was never going to be easy. There are 23 new and upgraded technologies added to the Ford compared to the Nimitz class it is designed to replace. That tech is so new, it's only being tested now the Ford has joined the main fleet at sea. New search radar, aircraft recovery systems, and two new electromagnetic systems to launch planes and power the munitions elevators have not worked since it was commissioned in 2017. The issues have been so bad, the Ford has had to cancel flights completely for up to three days due to the new EMALS system not working. If you didn't know, EMALS stands for Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System and has been introduced to the new Ford class of carrier to enable the Navy to launch more aircraft faster and safer than they could using the old steam-powered technology. This should mean the Ford can now get planes in the air within 15 minutes, compared to multiple hours that it took previously. But getting aircraft out of where they need to be is only one reason for the new tech. It also means the Ford can utilize unmanned drones and much heavier planes that could not have been launched using the old steam catapult system. Longevity of the entire system will also be extended along with improved safety for the crew. As with most things electronic, they tend to require less time to get ready and need less maintenance. The EMAL system has been designed to average over 4,000 launches before requiring any maintenance, but it has been struggling to get into three figures. Wasting time, money, and resources on the EMALS system is bad enough, but unfortunately, the Ford also has problems getting the new AAG, Advanced Arresting Gear System, to work as well. Problems with this system alone set the entire USS Gerald Ford program back two years due to not being capable of doing what it needed to do. Time-consuming land-based testing has now had to be employed by the Navy and the contractors making the system to try to get it ready for full deployment. Even if the Navy does get both the aforementioned systems online and working, 
They still have to figure out how to get the new advanced weapons elevators to function. There are 11 elevators in total on the Ford, yet when the carrier left Newport News in Virginia in 2017, only two of the total 11 were able to be used. That should have gone up to six at the start of 2021, but the ship is still short by five. So, why the problems? Normally, the U.S. Navy will test new systems onshore at ground-based testing sites. They opted not to this time, as they believed they were dealing with well-understood technology that was already in commercial use. The cost and time overruns caused by all the problems and the lack of testing has now gone all the way back to the top of the chain. Any further defense spending related to offshore vehicles now requires land-based testing to ensure fiascos such as this don't occur in the future. Whilst the delays are embarrassing to say the least, the Navy will at some point in the not-too-distant future get it all sorted. There is too much riding on this not to. Once they do, the USS Gerald Ford will indeed be something to behold. Let's take a look at the performance gains the Ford-class carriers will have over the Nimitz they will be replacing. Any aircraft carrier has one key job to do, and it has to do that one job as quickly and efficiently as it can, and that's to get as many planes in the air and back again safely, ready to do it again. The old Nimitz system means that at full pelt, the Navy could get 140 aircraft launched per day. The Ford has the capability to increase that to 160 sorties without breaking a sweat, once everything works. But this can be increased to 270 per day under battle conditions. That's a nearly 100% increase in sorties each and every day. That's why the new electromagnetic launch and arrest systems are so key to this new class of carrier. Without them, there's no way the Ford could launch so many planes and get them back safely. Historically, any battle situation has inevitably resulted in the loss of human life. As time goes by, increasing numbers of missions are being flown by unmanned drones in an attempt to reduce that potential loss of life. Utilizing drones on an aircraft carrier up until now had been difficult, but the Ford will now be able to use a whole range of unmanned aircraft to complement its manned missions. Any aircraft, manned or not, is likely to need some form of weapon and or fuel. Getting that to the right craft at the right time and in the right place is going to be key to getting the Ford up to the number of battle condition sorties should the need arise. New forms of automation and redesigned logistic pathways mean the Ford is able to move fuel, craft, and munitions far more efficiently than the Nimitz ever could. That being said, Having the ability to launch the number of aircraft the USS Gerald Ford is able to would be irrelevant if it didn't have the capacity to store the number of fighters, bombers, choppers, radar reconnaissance planes, and drones it will need if that battle readiness is going to be achieved. So now the island has been moved further back along the deck. The bridge has also been moved, whereas before it was located on the island, it has now been moved to a lower deck location. The Navy has also taken the opportunity to upgrade the radar and detection systems on board the Ford. This means the older Nimitz-class ships would have had to utilize around six different radar setups to accomplish what the Ford can do with only one. This now means the island is much smaller than before, creating more deck space for more aircraft and easier movement. Plus, it cuts down on the Ford's radar signature. Whilst it's by no means a stealth ship, it's a lot less visible than any previous aircraft carrier. It also means that the Ford is much more stable, with a significantly reduced center of gravity than the Nimitz. So should it need to maneuver quickly, it can do so without fear of rolling and capsizing. Of course, all the increased tech and electrical-powered systems need more power. Using a single nuclear reactor in the same way the Nimitz-class ships have done in the past just would not have provided the power required. So the Navy has installed two smaller reactors that are more than capable of providing not only the power the Ford will need now, but also what is likely to be expected in the future too. You may be thinking that all that technology is great, but doesn't that mean more crew and increased maintenance? Actually, no, quite the opposite. Reported headcount for crew is said to be 20% less than that required by the Nimitz. That's the point for all the automation and electronics that have been designed into the Ford. They just need to get them to work. Similarly, the new reactors require less looking after too, regardless of being more powerful than those on the Nimitz-class carriers. 
All this means that while the headline cost of the USS Gerald Ford is an eye-wateringly high $13 billion, over the course of its lifetime, the Ford should cost around $4 billion less than the ship it will be replacing. Maybe Gerald Ford the President just needed a little more time in the same way the US Navy is slowly but steadily making the new Ford class carrier everything they want it to be. Thanks for watching. Hit the big red subscribe button, ring the bell to stay notified, and feel free to give us a thumbs up. We'll be back soon with our next video.